to the Planet Rock Podcast, the hottest show in the cosmos. Get ready for insight and inspiration right here on Planet Rock with your cosmic guide through our ever-changing space and time. I'm your host, Raquel Herring. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to the very first episode of the Planet Rock Podcast. I'm your host, Raquel Herring, your cosmic companion on this wild ride called life. I'm beyond excited to embark on this cosmic journey with each and every one of you. The Planet Rock Podcast is your go-to spot for all things relationships, personal growth, and navigating life's twists and turns from the depths of dating, marital dynamics, to the heights of spiritual journeys, entrepreneurship, money, pets, plants. We explore every facet of human connection because, I mean, you know, that's what life is all about. Each episode of Planet Rock is packed with insight and inspiration to help you thrive in this ever-changing world. From heartwarming stories to candid conversations, we're here to empower you and uplift your spirits. Tune in every Thursday at noon on Envision-Radio.com for some real talk, real people goodness. And follow me on social media for updates and swing by my website at RaquelHerring.com to stay connected. So settle in and let's rock your world one race, one relationship at a time right here on Planet Rock. So today we have a very special episode lined up for you as we kick off this incredible adventure. Some amazing guests have been invited to join us. They're not just guests though. They're friends, mentors, and individuals who played an integral role in shaping what this podcast is all about. So throughout this show, You'll hear from a diverse array of voices, from industry leaders to everyday heroes, each bringing their own magic to the conversation. And so without further ado, let's welcome our first guest. Hey, Rocky. Congratulations on your podcast. I know you are going to be phenomenal. Congratulations, okay? See you soon. Bye. Congratulations, Raquel, on your new show, Planet Rock. I am so proud of you. You're going to do amazing from your little cousin, Amaria J. <laughs> that is so awesome. Thank you so much, Tony and Amaria. I so appreciate the love. Thank you. And I just got note, we have our first guest, our second, third guest, MJ. I mean, media mogul extraordinaire from WMBM and WLRN. He's an amazing DJ, amazing voice on the radio. How you doing, MJ? What's up? What's up? What's up, my cousin? How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. Listen, there was no place else I would rather be than on the kickoff to Planet Rock. All right, then. Thank you so much. I know you are in between on your way to the next radio station to do what you do. So I'm not going to hold you, but thank you so much for joining me and, you know, joining us all and wishing me that congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, like I told you before, man, you you stay making history and you continue to make us proud. So you are that woman. You're that chick. So Planet Rock, Raquel Herring, you're the one, mama. Oh, thank you so much. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. You know what? It's so nice when you just celebrate it. Glory to God. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. And now, oh, my goodness, we have Cassia Early. She is our resident expert in law, honey. Okay, she's on television telling them, giving them all the business about what they need to do. Just expert advice. I mean, she is like Florida's premier lawyer and everybody, y'all listen up for her, okay? Because she's doing amazing things. And I'm hoping she's going to tell y'all about her trap cards. A big deal. So, Cassia! Yay! (laughs) I am 
am so excited to be here, Raquel. Thank you for having me here. And from one sister to another, let's take over the planet with Planet Rock. So I'm super excited to be the resident attorney to share with the community what they need to know, which is their constitutional rights to make it home safe. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We definitely want to know. Please tell us about your trap cards and tell us about, you know, where you appear on television. Tell us about like what you do. Okay, so yes, I'm a criminal defense attorney here in South Florida. I'm also a legal analyst on Court TV, Law and Crime, MSNBN, uh, MSNBC, and iCrimes, a host of shows. But most importantly, I am the community advocate. I want to ensure everyone are knowledgeable of their constitutional rights. So what I have are trap cards. These are your basic constitutional rights that every citizen should have in their vehicle when they get pulled over by the cops, you pull down your visor and you either read verbatim or from your mind. I'm gonna go through it real quick because it's real simple. T-R-A-P-S. T stands for don't get tricked. An officer can legally lie to you to obtain incriminating information. R stands for be respectful. We want you to make it home. A stands for you have the right to a free attorney. Do not talk to law enforcement officers without one. P stands for never give permission for an officer to search your house, your car, or your belongings. And last but not least, S, silence is golden. Remain silent and do not incriminate yourself. So we want to make sure every citizen is knowledgeable because knowledge is power. Absolutely, <laughs> my goodness. I cannot wait until you come back and just like really give us all of it because like I didn't know. I don't know that stuff. And we exactly. need to know that you're so right so we can make it home safe. So yeah, oh my gosh, I'm excited for you to come back and talk about everything that you're doing because you're doing big things and oh, telling about absolutely. your story. It's amazing, you guys. You want to come back and hear her story. It's amazing. Let me tell you something. You all need to tune in because that was just a taste of what you're going to get because episode after episode, energy, information, and entertainment all in one right here on Planet Rock. <laughs> oh my gosh, she got me smiling so big. <laughs> Thank you I love so it. much for that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, guys, this is awesome. Well, that is, Kasia is our resident attorney, as you heard. And now we're going to go to our next game. So now we have Matt Genius, and he is the resident mental health specialist advocate for all mental health, right? We need it. It's necessary. And he's going to give us a little bit of what he's doing here and how he got here. Matt, thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me on this inaugural show. Congratulations to you, Raquel, for uh, starting this wonderful journey uh, of Planet Rock. I know it's going to rock a lot of people worlds all over the globe. Let's go. And uh, so congratulations yes. to that. I'm excited Thank to be you. a part of this. You know, there was so much Thank energy <laughs> from you, from 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 Kasia, uh, uh, from MJ. It's just a lot of love in this space. And so I'm happy to be a part of this journey on Planet Rock with you. Thank you so much. It is a lot of love. You know, sometimes you just don't know until like people show up and you're like, man, thank you so much. Right? Don't so be surprised. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. You're, you're just receiving what you've been reflecting. You've just been receiving all of your reflections. So if there's love coming your way, just know that you've been reflecting it the whole time. So I'm happy to see it come full circle for you. Well, glory to God. Thank you so much. And I can't wait until you're back to tell us your story, tell us how you got here. Give us, can you give us a little bit like? Of course, of course. And so well, my, my, my specialty is uh, family therapy and family therapy is what my license is under. And, um, and I love what I've been doing for the past, maybe almost 17 years. And the reason why I love what I've been doing is because I've become what I needed 15 to 20 years ago as a black male needing guidance, mental health, understanding, and uh, a space where I can be safe enough to talk about my issues. And so currently I serve as a licensed marriage and family therapist in the state of Florida and Georgia, where I specialize in black male issues. I also do workshops and trainings with my wife in a consulting business called Genius Consulting, 
I'm also a children's author of several books. I have some of them right here, you Yay. know? And so there's a, there's a lot that I do, but all of it is to promote mental wellness. And so all things mental wellness, all things relationship is what I'm about. And so I'm just happy to, to, to be here to give as much information to, to see us all well. I love seeing us well with big smiles on their face. It's gloomy outside, but I'm bright because we're celebrating all a part of my wellness. Yes, that is so awesome. Thank you so much. So look at that. We have Casilla, uh, the attorney. We have Matt, the mental health special. And all that like goes together because it's such a big deal. It's just, it's so much of what we need, you know? in navigating this wild ride called life okay so thank you so much matt thank you for being here um now up next is pastor barrett all right pastor barrett is amazing an incredible story too you guys have got to come back and hear his story as well pastor barrett is our resident pastor and he gonna like chop it up, tell us what's up, right? So, <laughs> Pastor Barrett, thank you for coming. Tell us about you, tell us what you're doing. Listen, listen, first I wanna say thank you for inviting me on Planet Rock. Um, you rock Planet Rock, so I I'm excited for you first and foremost. Um, it's a blessing. You know, most people start a planet, the last thing they wanna bring on the planet is the pastor, so I thank you for bringing the pastor on Planet Rock. So we can rock, you know, um, it, it's a blessing. Um, you, you're bringing a, a core group of people that have a wealth of knowledge to uh, uh, impart upon your listeners. And so I'm excited for you and I thank you. And so for me, myself, I am Pastor Barrett, uh, senior pastor of Do Right Christian Church uh, out in South Central Los Angeles. And I'm excited about uh, just being a servant for God. I don't just focus on my title. I actually focus on the service that I bring to the people of God. And for me, that brings me joy. And so again, I'm just grateful to be on here with you. And however I could be of an assistance, I'm here. That is so wonderful. Thank you so much. Please tell us about Kingdom Tainment. Tell us also about your podcast, please. Okay, well, Kingdom Tainment is a faith-based production company. Um, it ranged from we have a 24 hour, seven day a week television network, Kingdom Tainment TV. Um, you can get it on any mobile device, uh, iPhone, mo uh, Android phone, any mobile device. We also have it on Roku television, 24 hours, seven days a week, where you can actually cat, uh, uh, catch uh, Raquel Herring's videos on Kingdom Tainment TV. Shout out to you. Uh, Sometimes I just turn it on and you're right there, just video right there, praising the air and everything. So I thank God for that. Um, you can also catch pastors preaching, teaching. Uh, we're working behind the scenes on some talk shows. Um, shout out to uh, our podcast, uh, uh, Kingdom Business with Big City. Uh, uh, your producer, Steve, who's on here, your manager. So I thank God for that as well. We just launched the podcast. And so I'm excited to see Kingdom work being done. Awesome. I'm very excited. Yes. Thank you. Look at that. So we got MJ, the media mogul. We have Casilla, the attorney. We have uh, uh, Matt, the, the mental health. We got pastor. Okay. Look at <laughs> We have it all set up. And they're the residents. Like they're coming in to like really talk about stuff. Let us like hear it from the real, like what's really going on and giving us like a really a good perspective that's a godly perspective everybody is like god fearing everyone has this incredible story to tell so i'm excited that you guys are here with me i'm excited you're here with the guest our um our listeners and that they're really going to get some really good information insight inspiration from the planet rock podcast and so now i want to introduce steve Steve, I can say like everything. I know I know everything about Steve, right? He's going to say that's not true, but <laughs> whatever. He think he know everything about me. This is my manager. My This is like my friend. I mean, like my best friend. And we talk about just everything. He's been, he's my producer, my manager, uh, just my confidant. And I'm so grateful that He's here with me because, you know, I need, we need people to get through this wild ride, right? So, Steve, 
Welcome to the show. Tell our guests what's up. What's up? What's up, man? It's so congratulations. Let's start with that. Thank congratulations. You. It's really good to see that you actually have pushed all the way through. You launched this bad boy. And you know what? I always say that's just one domino to the rest. Tip one and then to watch the rest flow. So I'm excited about this platform. I'm excited to see you on screen. And hey, you know, rock, rock, the planet rock, don't stop. Don't stop. I have not stopped. I have not stopped. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So congratulations. Thank you. Now, Steve, I know you're probably trying to be, you know, modest and stuff. Like, you know things, the music business, you know, um, you know, about the Lord. Okay. And you know about social services. Right. Can mm -hmm. right? Cause we talked mm -hmm. about this. Can you tell us some things about the social services? Because we don't have to talk about that stuff on Planet Rock as well. Yeah, well, sure. You know what? <laughs> um, social services is something that there can never be too much of. But unfortunately, there's not enough going on. And uh, one of the things we do, uh, we, we offer social services through my my church. I think they're important to serve the community. Um, whether it's, you know, helping out with some sort of a assistance for utilities or just, you know, making sure people have something to eat, you know, that they're very important, but, and that's all part of, you know, in that process, you're actually relationship building too, because you'll start to find that families continue to come and you're building relationship and you're actually helping to, um, just foster good relationships in general. Yeah. So social services is definitely welcome, definitely needed. But hey, you, yeah. you want to, what else? What what else would you want to talk about? Right. Well, that, I mean, that's what it's all about. Like you said, relationships, because relationships is just so broad. Because right. everything in life is about relationships. And you know, it's when I wrote my book that I started realizing, man, every facet of life is about relationships. And that's why you know I was like, that's what this show is going to be about. Because there's nothing that we cannot cover because of the relationships. So, right. I heard yeah. that in the intro, you talked about relationship with your pets, relationship yeah. with your plants. So uh, no, it's going to be interesting. Uh, definitely want to hear more about relationship with your uh, plants. Oh, for sure. I remember one time you had said before, yeah, you like to uh, be with the plants because they don't talk. And I was like, what is he talking about? They got right. a lot to say. <laughs> They don't like sitting over here. They don't like this much water. They have a lot to stay all the time. So yeah, that's a you know what? that's that's a really good point. Is because people are the same way. A lot of times you think that we communicate one type of way, yeah, and we actually communicate several different ways. And I like that point that you just brought up about the plants. You like not liking the light or not liking the sun here or being there, because like we again we're like that and identifying that in a person to figure out how to communicate best with them in a yeah. relationship. That's, that's, that's pretty good. You're already dropping nuggets over here on planet rock. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, I got to incorporate the plant somehow. <laughs> Woo! Congratulations Raquel on your long awaited show. We are so happy that you was bringing this body of work to the cosmos and shaking up the earth. And most importantly, letting people know the importance of relationships and what it's like to build with the most high Steve. Yes. And while we wait on Pastor Barry, give us, you know, how did you meet Raquel? How did, that whole, how did this whole thing that has now revolutionized into something wonderful come about? Wow. It's been some years, but we had a mutual friend uh, who I will, will re remain nameless that, um, was a he is a singer, but he told me about an artist that you know he thought that that we should write something for actually, but and he he had the relationship, and uh, so um, it's crazy because you know he that person made the introduction. This is definitely at least twenty years ago, and um, but never knew that in that instance that that actually her and I would ever really become friends. As a matter of fact, beyond that, um, 
I even brought writers over her who wrote songs for her. We recorded. She even visited, you know, my you know, my studio and different things, but never thought that she would become that <clears throat> her and I would become actually become friends. It was just business. Um until until probably I was at like my rock at my rock bottom. And uh and in my in my bottom, in my in my gutter, she uh she was going through some things at the same time. And, um, and then we had mutual people that we knew that were, you know, kind of like in the middle of it, but in the midst of it all, she literally provided me with like, I had some, some doctrinal uh, confusion and some stuff like that. She literally provided me with these cue cards, these little four by six uh, cards. And she will write, she wrote scriptures on these cards and um, she mailed these cards to me. And uh, and she just literally she sparked or ignited the uh, fire within me to want to know more about Jesus, and 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 literally that was the seed that you got several seeds that were probably deposited, but that's the one that wow it just burst and uh, we developed this long relationship in Christ together from that from that moment 20 years ago from a friend never thought it just it's been a it's been probably it's been the most fruitful relationship i've had uh out of all my friends because because one we're very honest with each other and Mm -hmm. it started out with feeding me the word of god literally started out by feeding me the word yeah i used to um (laughs) I, I was like, I ain't never doing no music no more. I quit. I ain't doing no music. <laughs> and listen, she did not push me to do music. She was like, oh, okay. Like, even though I didn't know that, like, she knew that her and I were supposed to work together um, professionally. Uh, she just didn't say anything. And I was like, you know, I think I had some misconception about the talent. She didn't realize that the talents were actually a form of money in the Bible. I thought the talent was the talent. <laughs> And um, and she had cleared some stuff up, but she was very patient. She sent me these four by six cards and would offer me scriptures. And then she would, um, and then later, I think I moved back to Los Angeles and um, she provided me with a a seat from there. And from that point forward, like we just, we just kept rolling. And uh, I seen that she had got behind me and had my back 100%. And I got behind her and had her back 100%. And uh, now we rolling. Ain't that right, Rocky? Rocky. That is right. We okay. have been rolling for a long time. Yeah. I'm going to put Pastor Barrett. Yeah, we've been rolling for a long time. Um, Years. Look, I, I'm yeah. not going to add, talk about how many years. But yeah. Yeah, a, a little bit of, of of people's lifetime. We've been mm. we've been uh, rolling. Yeah, we had so, decades, yeah. de- de- decades with an S. Okay, <laughs> okay. You, you want to put it out there? Okay, then yeah. So yeah, that's what we've been doing. Yeah, I ain't shame, man. I ain't shame. Don't be ashamed. That's right. <laughs> and mm-hmm. we've grown a lot, and grown a lot, particularly in the word. You know, yeah. um, that's a big deal mm-hmm. because we both, like you said, we had we both was in a place. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah, I remember those scripture cards because mm-hmm. uh, sometimes I still use them because mm-hmm. I have to, you know, but <laughs> <And> the, <laughs> are you laughing? Yeah, and you know, the most beautiful thing is that like to go from a place where you were ministering to me and then like full circle, I come back and, and now there's days that I'm ministering to you. Yeah, yeah. And, wow. and that's how that works, you know, and that's why it's important. Um that we don't um, pass up those opportunities to to drop that seed into someone, and um, and then let, let and it's not that you like, you know, woke me up and grew me up in the Lord because God gives the increase, right. you know. But the fact that you do it, and then I think Pastor and I were talking about this on our show yesterday, and then to sit back, and I don't know how you feel, but to sit back and watch the growth from the seed that right. you're planting, yeah, right. you it's know. Amazing. Go ahead, Pastor. No, no. Listen, I'm, I'm listening to you guys. You guys taking me to church, so I'm just listen. I'm <laughs> I, again. I'm excited. 
I was I was in the car speeding to get to a location where I could just, you know, set up and relax. So I'm now relaxed. And uh, again, congratulations to you. Um, but I think it's awesome how the two of you uh, have that connection. Uh, it's innocent. And one of the things I love about uh, Big City, Steve, uh, Steve, he always promoting you. Um, when I met you, I met you based on him promoting you. And uh, we was talking about a film and we, he was like, man, I got somebody perfect for the role, you know, and I start sharing that with him. And he brought you to the set. You aced the role wow. as the detective in the movie Beyond the Shield, still on 2B TV. Um, and it was just 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 something about you that you just fit right into that character. And what's unique about you, you have the gift to fit right in. So it's not uh, far fetched for me that you can go on a planet and just set up a podcast and, and just rock, you know, like, like Steve said, and have planet rock and then bring talented people also with you and, and allow that gift that you have to just touch the masses of the people. And that's what it's about. And sometimes you don't think that what you're doing is uh, working. Right. But um, right. we were talking yesterday about the seed that you plant. The, the important part is the fact that you, you know you did plant a seed. And the increase comes when God decides it's time for the harvest. And so the excitement has to come from the fact that you plant it. Right? You have to get excited about the fact that you plant it. And whenever harvest comes or whenever that uh, right time comes, then, you know, you just right in place where you're supposed to be, where you should have been all along. But the excitement for me as, as pastoring and doing what I do is that I'm given the opportunity to plant seeds in the lives of people and then sit back and maybe a year from now, months from now, or years from now, you actually see the manifestation of that seed in that individual's life. And that for me is the greatest gift because I was not there all along. Mm. I, I like what you said about getting excited about the planting the seed, you know, because it's like we look for the harvest. I know I'll be looking for the harvest. I'm trying to get it that place. Mm -hmm. That's honest. Right. <laughs> right, right. We all, we all trying, do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm trying to be in that place to be more excited about planting the seed. Um, because like even this, this is the planting the seed, the Envy Luxury Exclusive, planting the seed. Uh, going to school, planting the seed, um, sure. the book, planting the seed. And yeah, I mean, you know, you're looking for that harvest, but I, I, like you said, it's in that planting the seed because, mm -hmm. you know, God gives you the ideas and you're bringing them, like you're, you're bringing them out, you're getting them out right. your head, you're manifesting them in the physical. And it really is a joy in that um, to see right. what you're doing and to have the confidence to do it because that has been a thing for me having the confidence to do the things that I say I'm going to do. Right, right. So I think throughout those years of when things got not nice, <laughs> when, when they weren't as bright as they had been before, that's when I started like really going in deep. And it was a, a man I had met outside of a store, Office Depot in Los Angeles, somewhere at like out in Reseda somewhere that I would never, it was my first time ever going to that store. And he had invited me to the church that I was at for like 10, almost 15 years. And at first I was like, man, please, I'm not about to go to church, whatever. But I was a little bit uh, tender. And I think it just caught me like at the right time, you know, when Christ when that interaction happens at that right time, that makes you say, you know what? I probably should do this. And I went to church and I've been there ever since. And that's what started me on that. Uh, and, and then the pastor there, Pastor uh, Gary Ziegler, um, his love, how he just loved Christ so much, that intrigued me. Because I'm like, here's this man who's like really in love with Christ. And that made me want to just know more about Christ than I ever had before, because I wanted to have that love as well. I wanted to fall in love with Jesus like that. And it was just such a big deal. It was so Im Im impressive to me. It impressed upon me the love that he had. I wanted it too. 
So Pastor Barrett is with us, and I don't want to let him go until he tells us his incredible story, okay? So we're like kicking off with Pastor Barrett telling his story. You guys are going to love this. Amazing. Okay, Pastor. Um, you know, just a story of uh, redemption, uh, the story of being able to uh, go through a wilderness experience and then being able to allow God to have his way in spite of the wilderness experience. I think a lot of times people um, lose hope in the wilderness. Um, sometimes we get ourselves in situations where we don't see God in the situation. But then uh, God is always in the situation and just I, I, I find myself being uh, redeemed by the grace of God uh, at a young age, made some very unwise decisions, some unwise choices, uh, got in trouble at a young age. But in spite of that, God had a plan for my life. And so I encourage people um, when they believe that it's all over, when they believe that, you know, um, there is no hope. Uh, God is that hope. He's that lifeline to be able to rescue us from the things that we find ourselves in. So for me personally, I made some very unwise choices. Um, but yet again, God has allowed me to come through those bad decisions and make the better half of my life, uh, greater. And so my book is titled choices. You can find it on Amazon, uh, under choices, pastor Michael Barrett, and it's a story of redemption. And so the hope is that no matter how far you've fallen, what you've gone through, where you've been, uh, God is able to redeem you. And I think that if we promote that, we promote Christ being the type of savior that can redeem a fallen people instead of, you know, condemning people as they have fallen or uh, kicking them while they're down, uh, we can give God the glory. And so my, my uh, encouragement to people today is no matter what you've gone through, no matter how far you've fallen, uh, the Lord is able to lift you up and put you back on that place where you need to be because he has a purpose for your life. He loves you. There's nothing you've done that can cause God to actually turn his back on you. Um, Jesus did it all on the cross. He died for our sins. So the mess that you made of your life, that could be covered by the blood of Jesus. And I just think that people need to understand that because most people get stuck in the place of, you know, I've done this and I've done that wrong. So God don't love me. Uh, God won't accept me. And that's not true. So I just encourage you to think to yourself and say, you know what? In spite of what I've done, uh, the grace of God can still cover me. And uh, that, you know, that's just a message of hope. So my prayer is that people would understand that. Amen. What turned it around for, for you? I know you wrote all like details in your book, so we don't want to give it all away. But what turned things around for you that made you say, you know what, I, I'm going to turn to Christ? I, I think for me, it came a point in my life where you begin to see a pattern of people making the same mistakes and you thinking that there's going to be a different outcome. And so when I followed in the footsteps of my father, my uncles, um, thinking that I was going to to actually get a different outcome, uh, I didn't get a different outcome. I got the same outcome. And so I just spoke to God and said, Lord, you get me through this situation, then I'll become a soldier for you. And God got me through it all, and, you know, in spite of everything that I've had to endure, God got me through it all and allowed me that second chance at life. So I got a revelation of life. Um, I got a revelation of darkness. I got a revelation of light. I already walked in that darkness, in that wilderness experience. And then like that Paul on the road to Damascus experience was he had to get knocked off of his beast. He had to get blinded. And then the Lord had to open his eyes again so he can actually see. And when God opened my eyes again, I was able to see spiritually things that I didn't see before. And so now it's like, OK, I can I can attest to the two kingdoms, kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light. And I've been over there before, you know. And so for me, for to get that God opportunity for a second chance, I'm going to take advantage of it and live for the Lord. Well, that's good because some people need to see that, like you said, no matter what you've done, nothing can keep you from Christ redeeming you. 
Right. And right. I think a lot of people really think that, oh, I've done so much bad. I've just been so horrible. There's no way that I can get redeemed. And then they right. kind of still keep doing the stuff. But in the back of their mind, they really do want to be redeemed. Right, 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 yeah. right. Right. Now, you're married and your wife is in the music business. Yes. Right. So yes. how did that come together of you two meeting and having this lovely relationship? You all have been married a long time. Um, I met my wife in church. Um, we've been married now. This is going on our 11th year. We've been knowing each other going on 12 years. Um, so when, when I met my wife, um, she was singing in the church, but she lost her desire to record and different things like that. And so one day I just surprised her and said, um, she said, where are we going? I said, we're going to the studio. I had wrote this song and um, she wanted me to rap on the song and she sung the hook on the song. It's called um, You Can't Keep Running, uh, Running From The Lord. And so we recorded that song. And ever since then, she's been in the studio recording music. Um, she does the leads the praise and worship at Do Right Christian Church. And um, so it's just it's an awesome thing. And I think that more so than getting a record deal or more so than actually uh, getting a Grammy or an award or anything, she understands that her music is her ministry. And when you understand that music is your ministry, uh, the outcome or the reward is that it will touch a life. And so she understands that now, you know, whereas before it was like, well, let me get in the industry to get this award or let me get in the industry to get famous or get known or get uh, money. But she really understands that her music is her ministry and whatever God decides to do uh, once you plant those seeds, then that's up to God. So that that's uh, one of the things that her and I have been able to do. Yeah. I totally understand that. You know, I, I felt that same way about, you know, it really was, it really, for me, it was like those lights, the show, the whole like right. production, like, you know, I right. really, really wanted that. Right. And that was my aim, but I just felt like I couldn't really get comfortable with everything that was going on. Like I wanted that, but it's like this road to get there. And that road just didn't seem like, the road that it just was not the right things on that road right and so it like you say it became you start realizing your music is your ministry right um, because it's something greater at that point those things even though you want those things those things i mean it's exciting but they're not more important than having that relationship with christ it's not right. more important than doing what Christ has for you to do. It just, that may just not be what he has for, you know, for you right. to do. Well, you, you have to two count your blessings. When I think about the scripture that says, what good is it if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul or yeah. what would a man give in exchange for his soul um, as his or her, you know, um, I, I look at that in a sense of most people would say, you know what, I hear about all that Jesus stuff, about Christ and what he did for me and all of that, but I'd rather take this industry and what it's going to offer me. And so yeah. what they're really doing, they're exchanging uh, the world for their soul. And at the end of the day, it looks like glitz and glamour and fame and fortune and all that stuff. But if at the end of the day, when you take your last breath, you lose your soul, then what was that worth? See, right now you don't really understand it because the average person does not believe in the exchange. You know, you're giving up your soul for the temporary happiness, the temporary luxury, the temporary fame. But then at the end of the day, uh, um, you, you, we've seen celebrities, we've seen multi-millionaire, billionaire individuals who have taken that last breath. So the fame, the fortune, the accolades, the money, it cannot prevent you from taking that last breath. And they have gone on. And, and what's going to make the difference for them is what was their relationship with the Lord? Mm. I believe if you uh, accept Christ and, and, and ask for forgiveness of your sins, you will be forgiven. Um, I believe that without being covered in the blood of Jesus, without being born again, um, you face condemnation because the Bible tells you uh, uh, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So without that covering, 
without that blood cleansing, that sacrificial blood that Christ shed on that cross, if you don't have that and you die in your sins, um, it, it, it's not it's not good. You know, it's not good. So you may look at people and say, oh, I wish I had what they had or I wish I was where they are. And you don't really know where they are. You're in a good place if you have your soul secured. I always tell people a lot of times people look for insurance. You know, I got car insurance. I'm sitting on my boat right now and I have boat insurance. You got insurance at your home. All of these different things. You know, we got insurance on our church, all these different things. That's insurance. But yeah. what about assurance? Mm. What about assurance as it relates to when you die, when you die? Yeah, you got insurance that's going to bury you, going to get your casket and all that stuff is good and necessary. But what about the assurance? What about when you go before the Lord? What will he say? Will he say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity? I knew you not. Or would he say, well done, my good and faithful servant? You know, so that's what has to be the focus. You know, the Bible says, yeah. seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything else will be added to you. The, the clothing you need, the money you need, the home you need, the food you need on the table, all of that's going to be uh, uh, given to you by God. But first, you got to seek that kingdom. And that's the place where I am. I, I'm in a place where material things don't matter to me. I, I'm good and I'm comfortable because I have sought the kingdom first. But there was a time in my life where I didn't want to hear this. I didn't want to hear about Jesus. I didn't want to go to church. I did. You know, my mom tried to steal that stuff in me and I didn't want that. I wanted what the world had to offer only yeah. to find myself stripped by God of everything I obtained in the world. And then him being able to show me what the world really is. And it's like, OK, at least give me another chance to make this right. And he right. gave me that chance because he could have said he could have said, you know what? I'm not going to give you another chance because that's what you want. I'm going to let you have it and let you destroy. And then when you face me on that day, I'll tell you to depart from me. Whoa. Jeez. Yeah, no, we don't, nobody wants to hear that. I, uh, yeah, that's a scary one that, yeah, if you, like, you know, get with Christ, get right. with Christ right. and see him. So you're not hearing that because that's right. not going to be nice at all. Right. And I don't think like, I don't think we really get it like because we don't we don't really have an idea of what eternity is. We don't really we're right. just going off what we've been told and to have faith in those different um, experiences that we have with Christ or we believe we have with Christ. So I don't think like it really impresses like what that really means right. and what how deep that is, you right. know. I would love to achieve that maturity in Christ. You got to get beat up first. Oh, okay. You, well, you look, you got to get spiritually beat up first. I didn't understand it at first when I was getting spiritually beat up. Like, why are they doing this? Why is this happening? Why that's happening? And then I had to realize, okay, this is how this works. Mm. Because uh, 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 olives have to be crushed. The more they're crushed, the more oil is going to produce. Yeah. Okay. So I see. Be careful <laughs> what you wish for. <laughs> you, you, you ever you ever run across people that say, "Lord, give me the patience of Job." Yeah. You ought to not say that if you don't really know what you're saying. Right. Right. Let me roll back what I said. <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I love the maturity because that's what. I mean, that's what we need from a pastor, that kind of maturity to say, you know, I, sometimes it is hard, but you have like progressed beyond those, um, those challenges mm. that we often face, you know, but, but I still, I still have those moments, you know what I mean? Where it's like, like, God, where are you? What's, what's going on? You know? And that's just reality. I mean, no one is above. I think that sometimes as pastors, we do more of a disservice than uh -huh. a service. We, 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 we're on a pedestal and we give this false narrative that we don't go through nothing. Uh, everything is just floating on air and, you know, it's just, woo. no, you have those moments where it's like, okay, Lord, what's going on? And I just was transparent and share with you guys what I just dealt with, with my daughter, but yeah. it did not prevent me. At the end of the day, when I got up off of from praying and fasting and crying out to God, it did not prevent me, in spite of what I had to go through, in spite of that 
whole situation, it did not prevent me from going back into the house of the Lord and giving God glory. And I think that's what makes it, for me, it makes it count because anybody can give God praise and glory in the midst of triumph, in the midst of accomplishments. You know, you hear, you hear entertainers get up, ah, I just want to thank God for this award. And wow. I try to, sometimes I say, what God they talking about? Because God didn't give you what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So anybody can give thanks in those times. Dr. King said, it's n- the measure of a man is measured in times of discomfort, not comfort. You can't ter- determine who a person is in, in the times of comfort because yeah. anybody can manifest a smile in comfort. How yeah. to manifest a smile in discomfort is challenging yes yes it is and so like what advice would you give us and how do we do that i mean you know i know and and i'm gonna put myself on blast out there i don't like the discomfort i don't think anybody does nobody it's hard to like push your mind past it when you feel that pressure come upon you and um, let's say you know, a day or two or whatever, maybe you stew it, but it's still there. And you don't know how long that pressure is going to last. Right. How do you push through? How do you get your mind into that other, that other realm with the Christ to just like depend on him, to trust him, to, to like, uh, to breathe. (laughs) It, 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 it comes by way of death. Mm -hmm. Um, Christ even in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, he pleaded with God. And actually, he he pleaded, and <laughs> Paul pleaded three times, but Christ pleaded three times too. If you, you read that, he actually says, Father, if it's possible, remove this cup. In other words, if there's a better way we can go about this, let's do it that way. Yes. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he actually mm-hmm. prayed three times. He prayed the first time, he prayed again, then he prayed again. Then he was, you know, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So yeah. th- it's okay to say, Lord, you know, this is too hard for me. This is, it's too much, you know. Um, I, I don't want to do this. I don't like this. I don't appreciate this. You, 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 there's another way you could have allowed this to happen. Um, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. I believe that heaven has a will. I mean, heaven has, you know, it's like, uh, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So heaven has a will. God has a will for our lives, right? And then we have a will. And so if we line our will up with the will of God, we're walking in what God wants for us and what's best for us. But in that, it's not always just a good moment, you know, a a good experience. Sometimes the will of God will take you through challenges, you know, and sometimes it will cause you to be crushed. Sometimes it will cause you to die. Sometimes it will cause you to be lied on. Sometimes it will cause you to be persecuted. And when those things happen, what I've learned and what I'm still learning, I'm not there yet. What I'm still learning is in those times of me going through what's uh, not comfortable, God can use the discomfort to Mm. build me up to strengthen me, to encourage me. He can use it for that purpose. And so somebody will come along uh, in your life and you've gone through something personally and then they'll come through and what you've gone through, you'll be able to share with them. How how do you see like faith in Christ and this, you know, in our time and just not with us, right? But how is it intersecting with the current events and societal challenges? Hmm. Um, if I were to take a scripture and it says in this life, you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good courage because I've overcome the world. Um, Christ already overcome the world. Yeah. And I'm telling you, we, we haven't really seen anything yet. That's getting ready to come on this world. Um, there are conflicts, there's wars, rumors of wars, wars, earthquakes, famines, pestilence, all of these things are taking place. So the hope is not in what we see the hope is in a savior who promises his return that that's the hope you know Mm -hmm. um and and for me that's that's the hope that's That's the hope hope. i'm not focusing on 
the destruction and some people watch the news and they just get all bummed out and and, and it's like misery um yeah. i watch it for current events and and to be able to be relatable in my sermons and stuff like that yeah. um but it doesn't get me depressed it doesn't get me because i understand that these things have to take place mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's going to get worse and so the focus is that Christ is going to come back. That's where you're finding your your hope. Yes, yes. And that's where we all should be finding our hope in his return. Right, my hope is not in who's gonna be the next president, what they're gonna do for me, what about yeah. this, that it's actually in Christ. And that leads me to the question of like, cause this is what I'm working on. Um, just really working hard to believe <laughs> what God says about me on any day, regardless of what it seems like, regardless of what I'm experiencing, what I'm seeing, believe God's word, believe what he says about you, believe how he feels about you. Because you know, some days it just, just like you said, going through it with with your daughter, but then you have to believe that it's gonna work out for good. How do you how do you get your mind focused on that to know that God says that, like, you're the apple of his eye, you know, you you're a royal priesthood. You're this because in your mind, you're thinking you're going to see something totally different. But then when you see the opposite of what that seems like in your mind, how do you deal with that? And to know that his word is the truth regardless. Right. Well, uh, there's a scripture. uh, It says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Um, so what that is, it it sounds like that's contrary to each other, but what it's actually saying is I do believe, right. But there are times where I walk in unbelief, help the unbelief. You know, I believe you're my Lord. I believe you're my savior, but right now in a situation, John the Baptist proclaimed Jesus as the lamb of God. Uh, he baptized him. He bragged on him. He said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Um, he had the first revelation of Christ when he came and baptized him. Right. Um, but that same individual, when he was in prison and he was getting ready to be beheaded, he told the, 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 the people that were there, he said, go and see if Christ is the one or do we look for another? What changed his perspective? Because he was in a situation that he did not foresee him being in, right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and it's a perfect picture because you can at one minute believe and then based on the situation changing, you can have that belief question. But the good thing about God is uh, he still loves you. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. that you, you take comfort in that as well. Like, you know what? God understands that I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm struggling. So he just going to write me out of his book. You know, no, you yeah. know, he not take his hands off me because I'm struggling in this area. And my belief is kind of wavering in this area. No, he's going to encourage me to keep going. He's going to send somebody along the way to help mm-hmm. me, to pour into me that can grow me even more. You know, and that's what it is. That's good. Cause I know like, it's just, I guess like focusing on those things that are, that are of Christ. Um, it's hard, but I'm working on that too. I, I hope, I know other people probably out there too, just to work on that. Right. Right. Yeah. We're progress. So don't quit. Don't give up. Um, you know, uh, you'll be, you'll be fine, but you got to keep going. Yeah. You know, in this race, we get tired. You ever watch a marathon, how they just stop and, and, and put their hands on their knees and yeah. get water and then they get back up and just, you know, that, that moment of stopping does not disqualify you. Good you know, to know. <laughs> what disqualifies you is when you decide, I quit, I give up, and I'm walking the other way. Mm. You can crawl and make it to the finish line one day. You can limp and make it to the finish line one day. You can have people carry you and make it to the finish line one day. But if you decide, I'm quitting and I'm turning around, I'm going the other way, that's not the way of the finish line. Mm. Wow. Well, it's good to know that the Lord is like, 
he doesn't look at you. I mean, we know that he said, no, you know, nothing can separate us. But when we're having those times like, ugh, I just right. can't, I just can't right. right now that he's not willing to say, I'm okay, good. well, then you just can't. Right. You know, <laughs> he's still right. with you. You know, he's still like preparing, preparing that way for you. Right. Even when you don't, with, like me, even when I don't see it, you know, he's still right. preparing that way and he hasn't given up on me. Right. But there's times when I want to give up on him. <laughs> I do sometimes. It's like, oh, but it doesn't happen. Praise God. I just Man. can't see my life without him. Right. And that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. So, one last thing. How do you continue, and perhaps you answer, to nurture and deepen your faith journey as a pastor? Um, I fellowship with other pastors every okay. Friday. I believe every pastor should have a pastor. Every teacher should have a teacher. Every student should have a teacher. You know, I, I, just, I don't believe in... Um, like letting this be an island and doing it myself. Okay. You know, I, I believe in um, being able to fellowship with other pastors. Um, uh, iron shoppers, iron. I believe in fellowshipping with other saints, and I believe in you know my fasting, my praying, getting in the Word, and stuff like that. And you know, those things are not necessarily the victory. The victory is in your decision making. Mm -hmm, mm. that's that's really the victory is in your decision making because you have uh two individuals you have two god is desiring your soul and so is the devil mm -hmm. and so you have to get up every day and say who am i going to allow to lord over me today mm. so that becomes your decision so we only really get to make that one decision. Either God's going to lord over me or the devil's going to lord over me. Mm. That's good. In the decisions. The decisions In, we make. Yes. Thank yes. you so much, Pastor, for joining us. Um, I really appreciate you being transparent about your life. And yeah letting us know you know how how you're going through this life as a pastor because i think sometimes we think the pastor he don't have any problems or he <laughs> does, like you know oh he can deal with them he's the pastor mm -hmm. but it's a lot it's a lot of work it, it it's is a lot. A, it's a lot and you take it on like a huge responsibility to shepherd god's sheep right so we thank you so much and i hope well we're gonna have you here again because you got to talk about like all this stuff that's going on in the world and all these questions that we're gonna have and so yeah so i'm excited to have you back i'm available just let me know anytime i'm here i am an official pastor with residency on planet rock <laughs> that's right y'all heard it y'all heard him say it right here thank you so much pastor all right, all right. <laughs> I appreciate you. Well, thank you all so much who joined the Planet Rock podcast today to just come on and just show like, thank you for the love. Thank you so much for listening. Join us next Thursday here on Planet Rock on Envision-Radio.com. Look forward to listening to more of what we gonna talk about next week. Thank you so much. See you all soon.